Hello and welcome to yet another edition of a little show I like to call Hello Hall of Fame. Now this is a little different of an episode than usual, uh, being that all the people that I'm going to be covering in this show uh, are not eligible for the Baseball Hall of Fame. Okay, uh, I look at different Hall of Fames, I look at their eligibility, and I wonder why these people were not inducted into their Hall of Fames. That's what the show is all about. Well, this one's a little bit different. All these people are listed on the Band for Life list in baseball. That makes them ineligible for their Hall of Fame. Now, I took a look at the everyone that's listed that's currently on that list, and I found the ones that I felt had Hall of Fame-worthy numbers, and then uh, took a look at each one of their cases individually. Um, right now, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna, I'll list off some of the names of players that are on this list. Player, not only players, there are officials. There's even there's even a uh, umpire that's on it and a team doctor. So let me just get into it. It's really very interesting. If you ever want to have a good read, read all about the band players, band list, uh, list of band players in baseball or band. People, I should say. It's ban it's people banned from Major League Baseball. Look it up on Wikipedia. I'll put the link in the uh, in the uh, comments or in the description. Um, okay, George Betchel of the Louisville Grays, uh, banned in 1876 for intentionally losing a game. His numbers really weren't that great. He was seven for twenty, uh, seven and twenty as his, his was his, his uh, major league record. So, uh, Jim Devlin, George Hall, Al Nichols, and Bill Craver, all of the Louisville Grays, were uh, betting on games or trying to conspiring to throw two games. All of them were about in their fifth year of the league. I'm not going to say they were Hall of Fame worthy. Maybe if their careers went on, who knows? Um, umpire Richard Higgum was banned in 1882 for conspiring to help throw a game. That's a fascinating story. I just find that really funny. No, he wouldn't have made the Hall of Fame anyway, but I just think it's it's really... He's the only umpire banned for life from the game. Uh, Joseph Kramer, uh, which was the, the New York Giants team physician, was banned in 1908 for attempting to bribe an umpire uh, to conspire against the Chicago Cubs in a playoff game. Uh, Another guy, not going to make any Hall of Fame there. Uh, Jack O'Connor was the manager of the St. Louis Browns, who was banned in 1910 for attempting to fix a game's outcome uh, for the the 1910 um, American League batting title for Napla Joy instead of Ty Cobb. Now, him and Harry Howell, who was the pitching coach for the Browns, conspired together for this. Howell does have some Hall of Fame potential numbers. Okay, listen up real closely to his numbers here. Okay, he played from 1898 to 1910. He led the National League in games finished in 1900 with 10. Uh, American League in 1903, 10. He led the American League in complete games with 35 in 1905. He currently ranks 82nd in the MLB all-time ERA list at 2.74 ERA, um, 87th all-time complete games list at 244, and 68th on the hit batsman list with 97. I like him already. Um, he's also Baltimore Orioles, Baltimore Orioles, Baltimore Orioles career leader in ERA 2.06. Uh, in 13 seasons, he had 131 and 146 win-loss record. Uh, he started 282 games, uh, played in 340, uh, 244 complete games, 20 shutouts, 53 games finished, six saves, uh, 2,567 and two-thirds innings pitched, 2,435 hits allowed, 1,158 runs allowed, uh, 781 earned runs allowed, 27 home runs. Uh, 677 walks, 986 outs, uh, 53 wild pitches, one balk. <laughs> um, really, uh, fascinating numbers, but he is never going to be reinstated. I have no doubt about that. Just throw that over there, because he is not going to be reinstated. Uh, the funny thing about this, actually, you know, there is a chance he might get reinstated if somebody actually looked at his case, because, uh, in the 1980s, they actually took a look at that batting, uh, a title, and found that they actually counted Ty Cobb two games. Uh, this uh, they actually counted two game, one game as two games for uh, Ty Cobb, which actually put him over Napla Joy. So 
Napla Joy would have won it anyway. Uh, so maybe somebody will look back and put Harry Howell in the Hall of Fame. I doubt it. Uh, it's been over a hundred years. Um, would he be Would he be a, a viable candidate? I think so. I really do. I think he. Uh, I think he'd be something that they could take a look at. It's possible. Anything can happen. Uh, let's see. Horns Fogel of the Philadelphia Phillies owner was actually banned for life because he questioned the umpires. I thought that's pretty damn funny. Um, okay. Uh, some of these others. Uh, Hal Chase. Hal Chase was banned for consorting with gamblers and betting on his own team and other corrupt practices. His numbers are Hall of Fame worthy. Let's just take a quick look real fast here. He played from 1905 to 1919. Okay. Um, in 1981, 62 years after his last Major League game, baseball historians actually included him in their 100th greatest baseball players of all time. Um, even, even Babe Ruth and Walter Johnson named Chase as the best first baseman ever. He was a great defensive player, but he also had a 291 batting average with 57 home runs, 941 RBIs, and 363 stolen bases. Um, but unquestionably, he did uh, conspire with gamblers, and um, I mean, they have... They have all kinds of proof on this. I mean, Walter Matthewson, or I'm sorry, Christian, Christy Matthewson went up to bat for this guy to try to, to you know, get him so he wasn't banned for life. And this was before um, Kennesaw Matt and Mountain Landis uh, was in charge of, of getting people out uh, as far as being a commissioner. There was no real commissioner at the time. And uh, he couldn't even get him off the hook there. So really... Uh, with Mount, Kennesaw Mountain Landis' decision to anyone consorting with gamblers uh, would be banned for life. Uh, there's just too much proof. There's just too much proof, and uh, it's also been too long, I think, that uh, yeah, he, was, he, was, uh, he was banned in 1920. Uh, I don't think he ever will be reinstated, but his numbers are pretty good. They're very interesting. Take a look at Hal Chase. Take a look at his, his career numbers and uh, see if you don't agree with me that he actually was a very good player. Um, let's see. Oh, oh, Heine Zimmerman. Heine Zimmerman is a very fascinating story right here. He was playing with the New York Giants and was banned in 1921 for encouraging his teammates to fix games. Um, Really, there aren't a whole lot of um, proof here, uh, except for the only thing. Real, the real killer right there was McGraw. Uh, was uh, the the manager of the Giants went ahead and um, testified in court that he had uh, he had basically uh, encouraged them to fix games. But his numbers are really tremendous. He played from 1907 to 1919. Um, real disagreeable guy, um, but his batting average, um, let's, let's just put it this way, he only uh, <laughs> failed to win the Triple Crown because of Honus Wagner, uh, had a two ninety five batting average, 58 home runs, uh, another guy to really take a look and uh, just take a look at his numbers, he's a very fascinating individual uh, Hall of Fame worthy, maybe. You never, you never know. He's a very interesting story, though. If you ever have a chance, look up Heine Zimmerman. Very good player there. Um, now, there here, of course, there's the White Sox scandal or the Black Sox scandal. Now, there's certain players in here that um, are Hall of Fame worthy. Uh, oh, of course, we got you got to start and begin with Shulos Joe Jackson. Now, uh, his his involvement is. Uh, kind of controversial. There's not really a lot of um, proof that he actually could. I mean, the guy couldn't even read, for God's sakes. Um, he, uh, he, his case has been up for reinstatement several times. And if anyone, I believe he will be reinstated and will be put in the Hall of Fame. Uh, played from 1908 to 1920. Batting average of 356, had 1,772 uh, hits, 54 home runs, 70, 785 RBIs. Uh, he hit 408 as a rookie in 1911. Uh, World Series champion in 1917, and third highest career batting average of 356. Um, I have a feeling that he will be 
reinstated and will instantly be put into the Hall of Fame. Uh, I mean, Babe Ruth patented his swing after Shoeless Joe Jackson. Um, he's a guy that I believe, I believe, uh, will be reinstated and will be put in the Hall of Fame. Uh, Eddie Sacati, uh was also in the Black Sox scandal. Um, they really screwed him over. Not saying that what he did was right, but they did screw him over um, because he had a he was he was uh, promised a a bonus if he had 30 wins, and they held him out for the last few games of the season to save his arm for the World Series, and he ended up winning 29 games. Um, so he felt cheated, and he ended up um, having to. He was he ended up going ahead and, and taking the bribe. Uh, but his overall numbers are just incredible. He played 15 years, had a 208 to 149 win-loss record, a 2.38 uh, earned run average, and 1,374 strikeouts. A World Series champ in 1917, two-time AL wins champ, and AL ERA champ. Um, I don't think that they are going to um, reinstate him. I don't think he'll ever get in the Hall of Fame, but... His numbers are fascinating, and something that if you have an extra moment, go ahead and check out because yeah, they really are uh, fascinating. Uh, Lefty Williams, he no way. His one number one numbers really weren't all that good, but he also lost all three of his games in the World Series that year. He uh, definitely will not be reinstated of any. Chick Gandel, who was the mastermind and ringleader of the scandal actually had uh, some decent numbers in his career. He played for 10 years at a 277 batting average, 1,176 hits, 557 RBIs, and 153 stolen bases. Um, he led the AL in first baseman in uh, fielding percentage four times and uh, was a World Series champ. Um, but he was clearly the leader of the Black Sox scandal, so he is not going to the Hall of Fame. He is not going to be reinstated. So, uh, he's another one whose numbers are, are wonderful to look at, but he is never going to be reinstated. Uh, Fred Mc, uh, McMullen, he was just a backup infielder. Uh, he really kind of wasn't really, his, his career went nowhere anyway, so don't even worry about him. Swede Riesberg, uh, another re ringleader. His numbers, not fantastic. Uh, Happy Flat Felsch, um, his numbers are average, uh, but he was really a young player at the time. Buck Weaver. Now, he knew about the conspiracy, but he didn't report it to the MLB. Um, and so, but this is a guy who actually managed to sue Charles Kaminsky for his salary, and he won. Uh, a lot has been said that, you know, he didn't deserve to be banned with the rest of the players, and his numbers are really good, too. He had eight years, in eight years, he had a 272 batting average, 1,308 hits, 421 RBIs, and 172. Uh, stolen bases, uh, World Series champ in 1917. His story is very interesting. I think he can be uh, reinstated and uh, at least eligible for the Hall of Fame, um, short, a shortstop and third baseman. Buck Weaver, yeah, good good player right there who really probably just got caught in the backwash of that scandal. Um, okay, after that, uh, Joe Gideon of the St. Louis Browns was was uh, was banned. His numbers aren't that great. Eugene Paulette of the Phillies was banned. We're working with gamblers. He's not going to be reinstated. He's, his numbers aren't that good. Benny Koff. Benny Koff is a great story. Look him up. Um, uh, the New York Giants, he was banned in 1920 for stealing cars. Uh, or for, I'm sorry, for selling stolen cars. Um, uh, there's a lot, a lot of, of uh, stories about this guy that he is... Uh, you know, he's he was acquitted of the crime, yet he was still banned for just being a bad influence. Um, he was, if you ever heard of the Federal League, which was the, the one of the, the competing leagues against the majors um, back in the day, he was the star of the Federal League. Um, he, he, he played, he was Federal League batting champion for two years, runs uh, scored leader, uh, stolen base leader for two years, uh, hits leader and doubles leader. Um, but his MLB numbers, over eight years, 311 batting average, 49 home runs, and 454 RBIs. This is a guy who really they seriously should look at for reinstatement because he really didn't do anything there. I think the fact that Kenneth Mattenlandis, uh, you know, 
basically refused to overturn the ban is the reason why they haven't looked at him. But I seriously, seriously, if you're watching this and you're in the base, you know, you're with the media and everything, I would seriously put in for reinstatement for Benny Koff. This is a guy that deserves to at least be on the ballot, in my opinion. Uh, Lee McGee of the Chicago Cubs. Um, he uh, he was banned for life. Oh, uh, let's see who else here. Let's see Phil Douglas of the Giants. He's another guy. His numbers really weren't that great anyway. Jimmy O'Connell, uh, Cozy Dolan. They were offering uh, <laughs> them to throw games. Will, uh, William B. Cox, another guy that seems the owner of the Phillies. Another guy that's been banned for life. Um, but that all brings us to the most famous person on this list, Pete Rose. Pete Rose. Um, first of all, let's look at his numbers. 303 batting average, 4,256 hits, 160 home runs, 1,314 RBIs. Uh, the all time a uh, 17 time All Star, three time World Series champ, NL MVP, World Series MVP, NL Rookie of the Year, two time Gold Glove War Award winner, uh, Silver Slugger Award, Roberto Clemente Award, three time NL Batting Champion, Major League Baseball All Century Team. He uh, leads the MLB all time in career hits, career singles, career games played, career at bats, career plate appearances. Okay, and he bet on baseball. He finally said that he bet on baseball. Um, I don't need these anymore. I don't need to read anything. Uh, well, Pete, Pete Rose, um, this is the way I see it, okay? He, will he ever make it to the Hall of Fame? Yes. I think he will be long since dead, though. The media never forgets stuff. They just don't. They don't like being lied to. Pete Rose lied to him, okay? He did. He said nothing in that report was true, and then he said everything was true. Was true. So, does he deserve to be in the Hall of Fame? Yes, but I believe it will be long after he's dead, much like uh, Shoeless Joe Jackson, uh, you know, uh, some of the others that I mentioned on this list. I honestly believe that they will, you know, some of them will get into the Hall of Fame, but Pete Rose, I think it'll be long after he's dead, and people will, uh, you know, really look at his accomplishments and not as much at the scandals and whatnot. Um, but that's just my say. If you agree with me, feel free to click like. If you don't like what you just like seeing this video, feel free to click dislike. Leave some comments. Tell me, tell me that that uh, you know I'm wrong about some of these players, that uh, they don't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame, and, and and that's fine. That's good, you know. And if you have any suggestions of people I should put on this program, by all means, please let me know. I will go ahead and get them profiled as soon as I possibly can. Um, uh, if you like what you see here, you want to subscribe. I've got other ones, other videos out there. I'm looking to put up more and uh, share this video as much as you like. So I suppose I'll get going, and uh, I'll see you the next time. I feel like going, hello, Hall of Fame.